अब भी जिसका खून न खोला खून नहीं वो पानी है जो देश के काम न आए वो बेकार जवानी है यत्र विश्वम भवती एक नीडम अर्थात समस्त विश्व एक घोंसला है और हम सब उसी घोंसले के पंछी हैं एक कैसा विलक्षण जीवन मंत्र कैसी विशाल भावना जिसमें विश्व की कई समस्याओं का समाधान है of Sri Ramakrishna in 1886. His disciples needed a place to meet and meditate. 
had materialized in a dilapidated house taken at a very low rent, now known as Boranagar Mott. The Mott was soon shifted to yet another rented house at Alambazar and then again at Nilambar Mukherjee's garden house at Belur. Meanwhile, during this period, young Narendranath emerged as Swami Vivekananda. His success story at the World's Parliament of Religions at Chicago in 1893 mesmerized the nation. After winning over the attention of the East and the West, Swami Vivekananda turned his attention to plan his dream temple of Sri Ramakrishna. He was not a trained architect and thus had to depend on his brother disciple Swami Vigyanananda to draw a plan of such a temple based on his ideas. 33 years after Swamiji's demise in 1902, the construction of the Belurmat temple started in 1935. Swamiji visualized a temple that will represent Sri Ramakrishna's unique message that all religions lead to the same God. Elements of Christian, Buddhist and Hindu architecture are freely utilized in designing this architectural milestone. Architectural importance of the Belurmat temple lies in its ability to express such an idea. Jato Math, Tato Path. All religions lead one, the same God. The facade of this temple faintly recalls a Gopuram that is the hallmark of the traditional Dravida temple architecture of the south of India. The horseshoe shaped arch supported on double pilaster at each end is very similar to the entrance gateway of the Buddhist cave temples in Ajanta and Kale. This Buddhist arch of the main gate also shows a scroll ending at each end. The emblem of the Ramakrishna Mutt and Ramakrishna Mission, originally conceived by Swami Vivekananda himself, fills the inside of the horseshoe opening in a very dignified approach. And a Shiva Lingam, sculpted by Nandalal Bose, complements the entrance gate composition. The pavilion at the top suggests the contours of roof patterns found in the palaces of Rajasthan, but at the same time, its chajas also resemble Bengal terracotta temple. The three scalloped arches of the central pavilion at the top are beautifully balanced with the large main arch below. Nine beautiful domes recalling Saracenic style and the central dome resembling Italian Renaissance architecture surmount the sanctum. Its design is based on Bengal's Navaratna temple tradition. In traditional Hindu temples, the Garbhagriha is kept apart from the Nath Mandir, in which the deity is kept isolated and viewable only through a small door opening. In Belurbat, the Garbhagriha is kept open on all three sides, allowing a clear view of the deity during circumambulation and thus charts a new avenue of Indian temple architecture. There is a 10-foot wide passage for circumambulation of the Garbhagriha. Design of its interior is no less interesting. Its close similarity with the Buddhist Chaitya Hall at Kale with rows of pillars on either side is another interesting example of fusion of different styles. Its bow-shaped roof above also recalls Buddhist architectural tradition. In the building of this prospective temple and mat, I have the desire to bring together all that is best in Eastern and Western art. I shall try to apply in its construction all the ideas about architecture which I have gathered in my travels all over the world. I have these ideas in my mind and if I live long enough, I shall carry them out. Otherwise, future generations will try if they can do it by degrees. The effect of the Belurmat temple soon after its consecration in 1938 was electrifying. Swamiji's vision of unifying the best elements of architectural heritage of past civilizations of the East and the West now materialized in Belurmat temple, paving the way for many more temples of Sri Ramakrishna that used the same principle of fusion. Sri Ramakrishna temples are distinct from the traditional Hindu temples. These were envisioned as a new type of temple that embodies 
harmony of all religions, the ideal of the unity of man, and the combined essence of all religions. These temples may be truly labeled as universal temples, in which followers of all religious faiths are invited to come and pray together. The world has witnessed the impact of Swamiji's vision in the temple architecture of the Belurmat temple and that of its branch centers. It is just a matter of time when the same will be clearly felt in all other branches of art. के जीवन की भव्य जागृति समग्र राष्ट्र के भाग्य को बदल सकती है समस्त मानव जाति के भाग्य को भी